Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built my cedar cooler chest and the techniques I used. Now right off the bat, I want to mention I got this design idea from Donald over at Fun With Woodworking. However, I made my own set of plans for this cooler, as you see here. As a disclaimer, I won't be giving the measurements because these are all going to vary depending on what cooler you use, so they're almost kind of useless. Let's get right into it. For the material, I used 1x6 cedar fence boards. Now the way I built these panels from this is I used two full width boards for the top and bottom and I ripped down another board for the middle. The width of this middle board is all dependent on how tall your cooler is. For example, my cooler was uh, 12 and 7 eighths tall. The total of two boards was 10 and 3 quarters, so that left me with the middle board being 2 and 1 eighth. Next, I built the legs. Doing this, I ripped a board down favoring one side a quarter inch off center. The wider piece will be the front of our leg and the shorter piece will be the side. This will give us a nice appearance from the front of the cooler and it will hide the end grain. I fastened these together using subfloor adhesive and pocket hole screws. I'll link the Craig Jig tool I used in the description. Now that we have the panels and legs built, we can assemble the top portion. Again, I used subfloor adhesive and 1 inch wood screws, screwing in from the back. Building the shelf was pretty easy. I just took the inside width between the legs and used that measurement to cut the runners. And I ripped down some boards giving the similar style as I did with the panels. Again, subfloor adhesive and pocket hole screwed. At the same time, we can make the shelf for the cooler to sit on. Knowing we're putting a 3 quarter inch trim piece on the top, I ripped down a 1 by 2 to 3 quarters of an inch. Then I pocket screwed the 1 by 2s to this, making a shelf. Another way you can do this is leaving the panels longer to accommodate for the 1x2. Now I thought of this halfway through the build, so that's kind of why I didn't plan ahead for it. A lot of the guys are just nailing uh, boards to the bottom, and then you can see the end grain, and I honestly think that doesn't look too good, so I wanted to make a hidden shelf inside, so that's why I did this. At the end of the day, you just want that cooler to be flush with the top of your cedar box. Next is the lid and trim pieces. I went with butting the pieces into each other, leaving square edges. I did this because if I were to miter these corners, they will always open and cup and they will just look really ugly over time. You can see I ran the front and rear longer and the side pieces I just butted into them so you can't see the end grain looking from the front. And again, like I explained earlier, that's how I did my legs. The lid assembly is very similar to the panels. You're basically building a box around the cooler lid. Once these are cut, I pocket hole screwed and I used subfloor adhesive to mount the cooler lid to the inside of the wood lid. Now, this is never going to go anywhere and you don't have to screw in through the sides or through the actual cooler so it gives a nice screwless look. The way I built this drain system for the cooler is genius. Okay, I have to give full credit to the gentleman working at my local hardware store for this one. What I've used is a sinkhole cover found in your plumbing section. All you have to do is simply drill a hole down the center of the sinkhole cover. Then you slide it through the inside of the cooler when it's actually in the chest. And you can use the provided lock ring to sandwich this sinkhole cover uh, between the cooler 
and then a female spigot threads onto the other end. Now if this is too long, you can always cut it down. That's the uh, benefit of using this. And with this method, you don't have to mess around with all those PVC connectors. The rest of the cooler is up to you. I went with the traditional bottle opener with catch can on the side. I've also added some handles. And I finished this cooler off with a satin polyurethane finish that sheds water and will make this cooler last and look good for years. I appreciate you guys watching and hope you got an idea or two, or even helped you solve some of the problems you had with building one of these coolers. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. If you have any other questions, I'll be more than happy to reply in comments below. And thanks for watching.